science is now spending... Do you think if we spend more money, we're going to learn more about our souls? Oh, yes, absolutely. How? Uh, in many different ways. I'll give you one illustration, and I'll come back to the question. This week, my, one of my foundations is publishing a book called A Bibliography of Research by Natural Scientists on Spiritual Subjects. And there are over 150 uh, articles that we've collected from learned journals, peer-reviewed journals of the high scientific standard where scientists have, have been studying spiritual matters. For example, none of us doubt that such a thing is love, and yet what little has been done to scientifically to study love? It's beginning, though, or prayer, or worship, or all these other things that are of spiritual nature can be studied, and if they were studied, would be a marvelous thing. We're beginning but to see a dawning of the understanding of the effects of meditation on a physical body. Yes. Is that what the kind of thing you're talking about? That would be one study, but it would be only one of hundreds or thousands of studies that we should be doing. Um, let's put it this way. The amount that is being spent worldwide for scientific research today is, in terms of United States money is about a billion dollars a day. Suppose we spent one-tenth that much on, on spiritual research. What do you think that... That would be $100 million a day spent on spiritual research, and that is more than has been spent on spiritual research in the history of the Earth. And we could, I hope that eventually, not too far away, we'll be doing it per day. Let's take Sir Alistair Hardy. He was one of the prize winners. For 50 years, he became world famous and was knighted by the Queen for his work in botany because he was the world expert on the varieties of plankton in the ocean and in the air. Then he stopped all of that and said he's going to do the same thing with a variety of spiritual experience. So he spent the last 30 years of his life collecting, classifying, and studying the varieties of religious experience and wrote a whole long list of books with wonderful titles like The Biology of God. Hmm. So, and he's not the only one. We've, we've also given the, the prize to the elder brother of the president of Germany, who's Professor Carl Friedrich von Weizsäcker who was head of the famous Max Planck Institute for Physics. He, t in turn, learned from physics that the eternal things, the spiritual things, were one that was more important. So for the last 20 years now, he's still alive, he has devoted himself to writing books about God based on physics, not based on ancient revelation. So one can be a scientist with integrity and still be a religious person. Yes, in fact, uh, we are now thinking of having a survey to find out among the professors of, of hard sciences, such as chemistry, medicine, and so forth, how many of them pray. And we think it's going to be a very high proportion. Hmm. That you, to be a scientist doesn't mean you close your mind to the underlying reality. Scientists are only studying those things that are tangible, visible things. But that's not the total reality. The underlying reality, the thing that led to those outward appearances, and the thing that sustains and in improves these outward appearances is a spiritual matter. So the scientists more and more are coming to believe that the real underlying facts are, are religious and that science in, is just a study of the manifestations. But let's put it this way. We are mysteries. And the more we look at the mysteries and learn more, we realize how great the underlying mysteries are. The more we learn, the more humble we become to realize how much more there is still to learn.